Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Can I have your attention, please? Um, I think uh, for the sake of time, I think we need to kick off with this event as quickly as possible. And I'm sure also it won't uh, take too long. But what uh, I would like to, to say is that I welcome you. I welcome also the management here with us. Colleagues, as you know, the assessor's report was gazetted on the 14th of February, which was last week, Friday. Since then, the Office of the Administrator has issued a media statement to that effect. Over and above that, he has issued a video which has been circulating. And um, what is surprising or quite interesting about that video is that 89% of the people who accessed that video, they access it from mobile phones, which actually tells me that it's the students who are were actually the majority here. And the 9.6% of the people who actually access that video through the computers, which is probably people like me and some of us. 1.3% was accessed through tablet, and then 0.1% on TV. So that is a good sign that actually the message is getting across. Colleagues, without wait, wasting much time, I would like to call Prof. Rensberg on stage to come and address you. Prof. Sanwuna, Dumela. I thought that we would have had a full hall here today. I thought given the media that's been generated around the assessor's report that there would be great interest in the question, Sibega Kubi, where are we going? How are we going? So, uh, good afternoon, colleagues. Hey, don't see him. Good afternoon, colleagues. Okay, let's start that side first. We need some energy for this report. <laughs> yeah. Let's start that side. Domelang. That's good. This side. Sunny Bonan. I don't hear at the back. Sunny Bonan. Anybody here who speaks Afrikaans? Goeiemiddag. Goeiemiddag. Okay, I know that this is not a primary school grade one class, right? I just wanted us to get a little bit of energy because we, we need energy. Um, and we need to, to really now sit and reflect on the state of our institution. How many of us have seen the the they call it an op-ed, an opinion on the editor's page in the city press written by Professor Pichana. How many of us have seen that? Hands up. Uh, Butwam in the green shirt. Pagam? 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 Kalu Pagam? So you've seen it. What does it say? Can we get a microphone there, please?
<laughs> no, it talks generally about issues that need attention that have been happening here at VUT. Generally, is it generally or specific? Well, it is specific about the type of problems we encounter, but you know, it, that it has not gone up to the point of identifying specific names. Okay. So in that case, I would say it was more on the general side. So there's an English word. Um, the word is alarmed. You know, when you are alarmed, when you see something, when you hear something, when you read something, you become alarmed. Yes. Were you alarmed at all? Well, <laughs> I read it against the background of rumors that I've already had, so I was not that much alarmed. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> who else, who else uh, read this? Huh? Okay. So what did you read, Butwa? Uh, what I picked, uh, uh, what I picked uh, was the fact that you made mention that our university have not been uh, the only, in fact, the, what is happening in society with the issues of corruption, maladministration, maladministration lack of governance, uh, are not only happening uh, in those sectors. Higher education has been part of that. And what was uh, actually expressed uh, by, the <coughs> by the article was that if a university can be in such a, 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 a situation, what happens to knowledge generation, what happens to, to, to society at large? And also it talks on the issues that, uh, you know, they are key partners for universities. And it alarmed him that uh, such uh, partners just watched mm. and participated in some cases. You know. So that's I what I like that. <laughs> Yeah, you read, you, you read that one very well. Thank you so much, Butu. Anybody else who, I'm coming that side, okay. 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 You can see I'm. I'm uh, I am the. Uh, I'm the MC. <laughs> Sis one. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Um, I think uh, uh, Prof. Pichani has raised uh, uh, issues of concern. Apart that, VUT as an institution, we have lost our core function. Of, 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 of learning, teaching and learning, which is core. And he said all is not worse because we can still dust ourselves and, 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 and to do better. All of us who are seated here, it's all our part to do better. But most of all, he said get rid of all management and all the structures that have caused corruption in VUT. Hmm. Hmm. Anybody else? Shh. Anybody else who read this? Uh, anybody who read the assessor's report? How many pages is that report again? How many? One? One, one, five. So anybody else who has read either the report or the op-ed? But one. Prof, thank you very much. It was quite shocking to read the report and know about all the fraud and things that's going on. But yes, I'm pretty sure with a new, new broom, we're going to have some <laughs> changes and uh, severe changes. So we're looking forward to win and change the whole of UT. Thank you, Prof. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Some positive message there. Thank you very much. Anybody else? This is a town hall meeting. Sisim Biz went up. I'm looking for, 
I'm looking for insights. Insights. Yeah? How do we go forward? I think I've got a new job. I'm going to work at SAB. Okay. SABC. I'm, I'm not sure if they've, they've got money to pay salaries, but okay. Hello. <laughs> Good afternoon. Um, uh, uh, I'm in sort of a mathematics lecturer, so I speak very loudly. No, 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 we need you. <laughs> so I mic. would have wanted not to speak using a mic. But anyway, I, I suppose I basically want to say, uh, in the first place, it's a sad state that we always have uh, demonstrators coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we should be responsible ourselves to do our work. Uh, but all the same, because we've had uh, some issues, uh, I'm told this is about the third time perhaps we've had a, a, an administrator. So thank you, Prof, for coming in. And one would think that uh, uh, so far what has happened, uh, there are a few things we seem to learn that uh, there will be changes. So that's a positive thing. Uh, I haven't read the report, but uh, one would have thought that the problems were clear, even from the beginning. Uh, it's a long report, but from the summary, we've seen some of the things, and you've started working already. Uh, my question would be that uh, I know you are here for a very short period, which is about uh, two years, I think, or something. And less, time is already less almost two gone. Years now, yeah. Yes, yeah. Time, part of it is already gone, and I can imagine there might be very few things that you might manage to achieve. So my question, because of the time, my question would be, at the moment, I'm sure you you read there will be a lot of resistance from some of the things you might want to do. And by the time you get to that stage, you will have achieved a few things, but you experience some, a few resistance. So my question would be, if you experience some form of resistance within this short period of time, what are you really going to do? Because I can imagine over some time when people try to change some things, you are told this is not the way we do things at VUT. So you expect a lot of resistance here and there. And I can imagine there's already that kind of resistance. But what are you going to do? So, so I must say that uh, I've not yet come across the resistance. Um, I don't know what's going to happen. Monday is my first meeting with the SIU. You know the SIU? Everybody knows the SIU? So my first meeting is on Monday. So we'll see what comes out of the wash in the next month, right? Um, we'll see. We'll see what comes out of the wash. Uh, and so I should say that it's the SIU that called me first. I didn't call them. How's that? Isn't that a good response? So they called me when they saw the, uh, the report um, and uh, we sent them the full report and uh, we'll see once we begin to sit down with them over the next few weeks beginning Monday you know of course what you have to do you have to identify exactly what you want to to do you've seen the report the assessors report come have a seat you don't have to stand please come and have a seat um, so the report, as you know, draws attention to concerns about corruption and fraud and kickbacks. So you know kickbacks? You know what's a kickback? Huh? So uh, you say we're going to fix university residences for 30, how many? 30? 30? 30? 32 million, 37 million. So you say we, we're gonna fix residences for 37 million, right? And then you go back six months later, hmm, you have to start again from scratch. Meanwhile, the letters that were written were saying, wow, what a great job. You know, fantastic job. You know, I can highly recommend this group, yeah? So we have to look at those things. We have to look at the companies. So both staff have to explain themselves involved in procurement. And then secondly, um, and secondly, 
the companies have to explain themselves. Um, you will have seen one of the key recommendations that's been made by the assessors is that A, it's a series of things around the same issue, A, you have to get each one of those who have been contracted in the last five years, each one of them must sign an undertaking that they were not involved in any kickbacks or corruption or fraud. You know what's the problem with fraud, no? Yeah? I think we, I think we need more upbeat music than that. <laughs> yeah? To get, to get moving. Yeah? But that's okay. So they say the first thing we need is to get guarantees from these companies. They must sign that they were not involved. Yeah? And the idea is the SIU will then go and based on the evidence that we give, the docket that we develop, let's use that word docket. You know dockets get lost. <laughs> yeah? So we're going to have to put the docket together with them. Um, on each of these, whether it is capital infrastructure projects or whether it is normal procurement. You know when you buy toilet paper, you buy it for, how much is a toilet paper? One roll, not the big pack. How much? Two rand. One rand. Five rand. So it ranges between one rand and five rand. It depends on whether you want double ply or single ply. Yeah? Or you want, what's that other one? What's the other one with aloe infused? You know that one? Yeah? So now, of course, it's easy now to say, okay, actually, we're selling to VUT that toilet paper, the one ply for one rand, we're selling it to you for 20 rand. Yeah? So now we need to go into each one of those. Yeah? So this is the difference between the previous administrations and this administration. Yeah? The previous administrations were quick jobs, Take out the vice chancellor, take out the, what do you call, the council, and then I go. Job is done, right? So the minister said, Aaron, put on, what is this thing called? Put on two bulletproof vests in case the other one is rigged. Yeah, at least one of them will work. Yeah? So the minister said to me, Iron, I know that you, you've got other things you're busy with, but we need your help. This is a national duty that we are asking you to come in. And so he said, please, Iron, two years. Six months gone already, right? 18 months, even less than 18 months. Yeah? 15 months, I think, we left with, basically. And so the difference with this administration period is that we want to go deep. Yeah? Not... Yeah? That has happened already, you know that. Yeah? We've got to go deep. And so we're going to go deep in procurement. Deep. Yeah? We're going to go deep in management. Yeah? The recommendation from the, the assessors have also been in the area of the commitment and the effort and the competence of management. Yeah? It says, layer, it, it is very specific. It says, take out layers one to three. That's a strong recommendation. Yeah? It says, number two, all of those at levels one to four, including the deans, including the executive directors in support services, 
that all of us must go annually for a, what is that test? What is that audit? Lifestyle Mubambi. Lifestyle audit annually. And number two, we must declare conflicts of interest. Because we don't even have such a book or such a docket <laughs> that says, my wife, my son, my daughter, my uncle, my aunt, my cousin, my nephew, my niece, actually owned this company that is now doing business with VUT. Yeah? You've seen this thing nationally once. Yeah? I'm not going to give names. I don't want to drop names about ministers and about this and that and about sons and daughters and so on and so forth. <coughs> and so another key recommendation that they're making about management is that the administrator must go one by one by one through each of management levels one to four. Sit face to face, do an assessment. Competence, capability, commitment, performance. Yeah? So we've got to do that carefully and sensitively. But what I've recommended to the minister is that we're going to go levels one to six. So we're not going to stop at four. One of the things that I've learned in government and in other places that I've worked is that people in key roles at levels five and six, especially six, don't want promotion. You get that? They don't want promotion. They don't want to move up. <laughs> I mean, look at it. If I, if I was going to be the director for argument's sake or the senior manager in procurement and I'm not talking VUT, I'm talking generally if there's something kick back. Because unfortunately, what happens is that we have crime syndicates operating as well. Yeah? So if you think that that, that lady or that man in your bank has just been lifted out for fraud, actually they have been targeted I'm giving up, I'm telling you now from experience and my own knowledge, direct knowledge. They've been targeted for six months. They've been profiled. Their, their cash flow had been analyzed. What is their monthly expenditure? What's their income? Yo, won't see much tight, especially January. Yeah, because January, I'm not saying January. You know, January, <laughs> you know, January. It is fee time. I mean, we're seeing it with our own students. It's tough to pay fees. Um, and then what is the other month when fees have to be finalized? No? September. September, September is another pressure point. Yeah? On Shambi, there's a 50th birthday coming. How do we help you? How do we help you have a good party? And so for six months, these syndicates study, do the analysis without you knowing. And then they come knocking at your door at home. They visit you at your home. And they say, uh, we understand your situation. And uh, we are here to help. How can we help you? You know that? W which bank is that? 
how can we help you? Yeah? I'm looking forward to us having that culture here. Each one of us with that same attitude. How can I help you? Yeah? So they arrive at your home. How can I help you? We know you've got a you know, child at high school, another one at university, another one is in primary school, and the fees are tight. We can help you. We can even take them to a better high school. Put them in boarding. Yeah? So it's the same here in procurement. I'm not saying yeah, I'm just saying, yeah? So you see what happens in the banks and how they penetrate the banks' um, security systems? And soon, Ujo here, who is a manager, Ud Joseph, who is a manager there in that branch, is in the pocket. Yeah? And Joe is below the radar. There's no lifestyle audit. Because he's below the radar. It's the same in South Africa generally in procurement. You're studied. You're profiled. Mm. Okay. We can help you with your birthday. 40th birthday. How much do you need to have a great party? 200,000 rand, not to worry. Cool. Yeah? Where do you want to go? Mauritius? Yeah? No, I want to go Barbados. <laughs> and so all that I'm saying to you is that globally and domestically, that is how things are happening. That is how things are happening. I'm happy that notwithstanding what the assessor, what uh, Prof Professor Pichana says in his op-ed, that I'm now getting colleagues, courageous colleagues now, sending me photos and videos of uh, meetings that are not supposed to happen. Meetings that happen suddenly at some place off campus involving certain people who are supposed to be squeaky clean. And so what I'm appealing to us is Pakaman, Pakaman, Pakaman. Get off your feet. Get off your feet. How do we also say, get off your bum? That is not the Ubuntu way of putting it, of course. Yeah? But let's rise up. Let's rise up. I mean, the biggest criticism for us is that we are observers. We are observers. We are not activists. We are not engaged. And because we're not engaged, it won't be long before we don't, we're not able to hold all the jobs anymore. Because money is just slipping through our hands. And those of us who are still observers will find ourselves with our jobs. Because we don't have the cash flow anymore. Because on the one hand, we have students protesting the conditions of the residences, our residences, is pathetic. Yeah? The cleanliness must be improved. We have to really pick up our game on cleaning those facilities perfectly. I mean, I walk at the residences every two weeks and I say, oh my goodness, will I have my child live here? So who's responsible? I, I come from a university up the road 
where none of the residences were scored below a three, independently, three out of five. Most of the residences were fours out of five. Clean, well-maintained, good shape. I would even go and live there myself. But why is it Apa Lapekaya Inji? Why is it like this? I mean, I, I look at our residences. How do I score our residences? Yeah? I don't even want to talk about the cleanliness of our campuses and our lecture halls. Hmm? I mean, we, last week we had the portfolio committee here and yeah, I wanted to just disappear. And of course the students are stoking them up. No, don't go to that rest. Go come here. Come to this one. <laughs> yeah? It's like they had been given a list of places to go and look at, which is fine. It's okay. Our dirty linen is exposed. Dark. Yeah. And so we're going to have to clean up our act. Each and every one of us. If we want the country to be proud of this university, our nation to be proud of this university, we're going to have to pull up our socks, whatever metaphor, idiom you want to use. It can't be business as usual. It can't be. It can't be. It can't be. From the cleanliness of our campuses. So I'm going to be the portfolio committee now. Every week. Every week on a Monday especially. Because I know what happens over weekends. So on a Monday I'm going to do my walkabout. So please be on notice. And by the way, we are capable of responding. Upu Lennox. I mean, Lennox, I, 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 on the 6th, was it the 6th or the 7th? 7th of January. I went for a walkabout. Damn. I've never seen Intonji. <laughs> never. Never, never, ever had I seen Intonji. On the first day, you should be in prime. You've got parents coming. You've got new students coming. Place must be in mint condition. Grass cut. Beautiful. Rubbish cleaned up. Shh. So I took. Everybody knows Lennox here? Paga? Paga? So Lennox is our new executive director. director. Leonard is our new executive director responsible for projects and logistics. And they are studying him, the syndicates. <laughs> they know Lennox has just come there from, is it Siskai? It's London. It's London. Okay, it's okay. <laughs> He's just come from his London. He's set, trying to settle in here. He's looking for accommodation for his children. and and himself, and he wants to settle down, they're studying him, they're going to come to him and say, hey, how can we help you? <laughs> <laughs> so we went with Lennox, and I said, put one.
The following day, I went back with him. As we say in Corsa, I know go. I better run. Yeah. So where the team said, okay, we score him a two out of five now. Then we went again two days later, and the team says, I know, go. a three out of five. Some colleagues, Rihanna, Prof. Rihanna, was even commenting in the 22 years she has been here. She's not seen the place as clean as that day. 22 years. So 22 years of rubbish. Yeah? And I mean rubbish in a metaphoric sense. So yes, we can see the rubbish, but I mean it now in an intellectual, metaphoric sense that, that we have allowed ourselves, we have allowed ourselves to become used to rubbish. Hey, hey that word normalized it. In Jalo, it has become the norm. You know at home, when your child drops a sweet packet, well not packet, what do you call it? Plastic. Just taken the sweet, just drops it. And nobody picks it up and he drops another one. And she drops another one. It is a year later. What does the place look like? It's been normalized. It's the new norm. We have to disrupt this. We have to disrupt this. I know that you want to say something, but I'm coming. We have to disrupt this. And so going back to the report, I've, I'd shared with you previously the interim report, right? This report gives more depth gives more character, gives more substance, it gives more texture, gives more color. Colors that we don't like, textures that we don't appreciate, depth that disappoints us, and so on, and so on, and so on. I always say, it's how you bounce back that matters. Right? You know that expression. You know the expression, knocked down, never knocked out. Yeah? So we're done. We've begun the process of picking ourselves up, dusting ourselves off. There's evidence, little signs. The fact that we did not have, we had a little kerfuffle, little commotion with the students, but the fact that we had no shutdown, despite all of the shutdowns today at Nelson Mandela University, at University of the Western Cape, University of KwaZulu-Natal, more damage at University of KwaZulu-Natal, more buildings burnt, more university property burnt, shutdowns at parts of UNISA. And so it's possible. So how did we do that? We said, when you're in a crisis, you can't behave as if it is normal. When you are in a deep crisis, you can't behave as if it is normal. And we are in a deep crisis here. And so on the registration, and securing successful registration, successful commencement of the new academic year was a key objective for us when we started on the 6th of January. 
And from the 7th of January, every day virtually, we had management meetings with our deans and with key officers of the university, senior managers. Every day. Because it's not normal. It's a crisis. And with everybody in the room who could contribute to us delivering a successful commencement to the academic year. So you can count the number of meetings we have had. One hour meetings, yeah? Not three hours, no, one hour, 60 minutes. Focused. Why do we, why do we have students who are late applicants come onto campus? Why do we have a 10 kilometer long queue of late applicants? When it's a waste of their time and a waste of our time. Something we should have done a long time ago was to move online. So I'm just using that to illustrate what you do when you're in a crisis. You turn things on their head. You think differently. What is that word that, that, that some of us like? You've got to be contrarian. Yeah? You've got to disrupt the status quo. And you communicate. You communicate as effectively as you can. And we did that. And there were no cues. There was one little bubble that we had that we had to fix quickly because we had not loaded on time the NISFAS data onto the system to unblock students. But we were able to quickly deal with that. And why were we able to deliver this? We wouldn't have been able to deliver this on our own. It required active engagement and partnership and collaboration with the student leaders with the SRC. The SRC, we had three meetings a week. Again, well, it started, our first meeting was three hours long. Eddie, first one was three hours long. And then it became 45 minute meetings. Focused meetings, try and resolve issues, try and meet each other halfway but very clear line that we adopted this year. If you have outstanding debt, you're going to enter into an agreement with the university to make an initial payment as per a schedule we agreed with SRC, and then you're going to make agreement about the payment of the rest. I think one of the upsides is that we did collect quite a decent amount. No? Much better than previous years? Twice? Thrice? Huh? But better. Okay. Not quite twice as much as last year, but better. There's a good sign there, isn't it? There's direction. There's movement. There's progress. I should share with you also that we have had great challenge with first year, first time enrollments. Not just us, our peers as well, UJ, WITS, others, U UWC, we had great trouble. So the metric results look good. But the fact is that the number of students with 50% in math and science, physical science, has not been growing. And so when our university is the picture that is held up to the country, and you've got 50% in math and 50% in science, Zofika up? Are you going to come here? Because you've got other choices. You can go to UJ. Yeah? You can go to WITS maybe even depending on which program you want to enroll in.
And so we had great trouble with our enrollment in engineering, Rihanna, and applied sciences, yeah, and computer sciences. Where are we sitting now? So total enrollment, 19,350 against the target of 20,000. Ah, 20,684. So it's not too bad, eh? We've recovered. Now listen to this statistic. Those late applicant processes that we opened up online. 81,000, about 80,000 late applications. Sadly, far too many of those students don't meet our entrance requirements. So we ended up with about 30,000, I think. 32,000. But out of the 32,000, we could only yield maybe 1,000? We could only heal a thousand. So we're going to go back to the drawing board in the next couple of weeks just to analyze what's going on here. What explains this problem? And of course, we can't run away from the fact that part of it is explained by our reputation, by our image. The registrar who is not here today, he is not well, was saying to me, kind of trying to encourage me and the team to say, as you would also say, the country is looking. It's looking at how we handled this registration period and this late application period. Because our history is not good, even on something as Okay, it's not small, but something like that. So our track record is not good, and his response to me is, Iron, actually, next year things will be better. It will be better because people have looked. They've made their assessments, they've made their calculations, and don't be surprised. So, in summary then, back to the assessor's report. First port of call, of course, is the minister. First port of call is the minister. Um, we are finalizing the actions that will flow from there. You have heard me say that one of the things that I have recommended to the minister is that um, all managers Level 1 to 6, not level 1 to 4, 1 to 6. Annual lifestyle audit, annual declaration of conflict of interest. Levels 1 to 6, the administrator will sit down with each one of those colleagues. It's about 70 colleagues. I have to sit down one by one to make that assessment as to fit. I don't know how this word redeployment has been normalized. <laughs> but I'm told that part of the job of the administrator is if there is a misfit, yeah, person should be redeployed. I don't know to where. Keep in mind, keep in mind that we've got a hundred and how many million rands worth of vacancies? No, total vacancies. We have a total, we can't fill post to the value of 171 million. Just let that sink. Yeah? Amongst those posts, 105 academic posts. How many academics do we have? About 380? 380? 
380, Sanjay, about 380. Yeah? Those are posts that are filled. We have 105 vacant that we can't fill. Because of the period of, hmm. I looked again at our, our budget outcomes over the last five years, just yesterday. And you can see how a strong cash flow, a strong reserve, deteriorated in a matter of three years. Now surely if we run a deficit of 137 million rand, it means we're chewing up cash, 137 million rands, from that reserve that we have. You do that for three years, and this is where we are today. And so now I'm told, I'll have to look at that. I'll have to go to the minister and say, Minister, I need five million for redeployment per annum for the next hundred years. So, that is going to happen. Uh, the other part of the report of the recommendations you will notice, and I'm going to stop here, deals with governance issues. They deal with how we constitute council. They deal with the numbers in council. It says we should have a council of no more than 20. Um, I'll discuss the detail with the minister. My own thinking is 21 is a good number because that allows you to have the 60-40 split nicely and it also allows you to have the odd number as opposed to even number situation. But that's detail. Yeah? They also recommend, the team also recommends that we revise the statute in terms of council membership and council conduct, but also in terms of clarifying roles and responsibilities of management. They specify specifically the registrar's role must be very clearly spelt out. So those are the recommendations then. They range from governance across to management, across to the procurement issues in the organization. And as I said, my first meeting with the SIU then is on Monday. And with the SIU, we'll lay out a roadmap for the next six months as to how we're going to quickly, um, um, uh, what is the word? Act, let me just use that word, take action. Um, sir, you had a question or a comment. Um, it's been a long wait. Yes, it has been a long wait indeed. I have got a comment and a question. Uh, while I was, I read the report and I was also listening to you, seemingly all of us here at VUT, some are not really shocked as they indicated, others are shocked. So one will try to think that uh, if I use a metaphor that when you are using domestos to clean, who will be left? And when the rot and the fraud corruption was happening, was people who are here, including the management, were they spectators or were they participants? Because I expected you maybe to indicate that there is a pending objection of the report, which will be indicating that no, some are saying no, that is a false report. It is not really a representing what actually happened. But if there is no pending objection, it means we or all of us we are in agreement about what is in the report. So, but the issue is what was our role? One will begin to feel a bit uneasy, like uh, we expect that you have people who will support you and work with you. Uh, will it be a recycling of a rot? Because we are still here. Otherwise, the domestos can clean everybody who is here if we were participants. Let me go beyond that now. Uh, when corruption was happening, you know, 
uh, it was happening under oppressive kind of management where other people were victims, some were sidelined, uh, some were disciplined, some were maybe even unfortunate fired uh, for no reasons, if I can put it that way, because people were doing as they please. I can't even say no utilizing the policies because I wonder if the policies were there were even effective. So it was like an autocratic kind of governance. And the machinery of the institution were used to deal with are these other people. Yes, I can see that there will be retribution. But what about reinstitution and restoration of those who have suffered under this oppressive kind of management? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, okay, in Kalu Eva land. What is a pending objection? My understanding is when I sat down with the minister and the assessors that the minister has accepted the report. Yeah? And so I think it would be helpful for for those amongst us who have objections to share those objections and let's hear what the concerns are, what the difficulties are. But the fact is we have to move the ship forward now. We have to move it forward. If we're looking for practical evidence, it will probably be coming in the next two to three months. Firstly, our own internal disciplinary processes that are underway. Um, we hope for it to be concluded pretty soon. And secondly, the Special Investigation Unit or Investigative Unit will also um, hopefully soon enable us to go to court or to trial um, in respect of a combination of complicit staff on the one hand potentially and complicitous um, contractors on the other hand potentially. Indeed, if, if there is a concern that there are members of staff here who um, had been silenced, um, isolated, um, then we need to tackle that and those colleagues must come forward to me. But we're going to go forward now. What's that? I think you have to write to me to make the case, yeah? Okay? You have to write to me. Yeah? But I think it's important for us as we do that, as we engage in that process of reconciliation, that we go forward. That process mustn't cause us to dig deeper. Yeah? and to refuse to move forward. We have to move forward. We have to pick up our socks. What is the other me metaphor? We have to dust ourselves off, pick ourselves up. Yeah? Now, as we come to the close of the session, can I, I'm not sure if there are any other hands, and I also want to give to the labor colleagues, the official labor reps, do we have uh, uh, Adams, colleagues from Intel? Leadership from Intel here? Do you want, oh yes. <laughs> Do you want to say something and then I'll come back to our colleagues at Nahal? Do you want to reflect on this set of issues? Comrade leader. Uh, afternoon Prof, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, we have read the report and uh, we're still studying it and uh, we'd like to thank you for your active and efficient uh, leadership so far. We're still skeptical about uh, the results and the action that needs to be taken so we'll be engaging you way forward as you mentioned in the next six months 
things will be happening and we're looking forward to that. I don't want to comment any further with regard to that. Cool, thanks very much. Let's hear from our leaders here at Nahau. Are they also still studying the report? <laughs> Afternoon, colleagues. Nahau fully endorses and supports the report. But we are saying, in doing so, administrator, bring organized labor on board because we are representing workers. I thank you. Okay, there we have it from our uh, recognized um, labor organizations. I just want to check if there's any, you know, we can still take a couple of hands from colleagues from the floor. Yeah? Where's that other mic? Oh. Thank you, Prof, for the opportunity. It's on, yeah. My concern is I've read the report and I've seen the recommendations and we are grateful that we're starting to see change at VUT. But my worry is our... That's what I worry about, that God. Wow. <laughs> However... I was talking to my colleagues and Mr. Kubun in the department to say, what happens after you exit VUT? Will that stability remain or are we going to go back to where we're coming from. That's my, because it's not good for the reputation and the image of the institution. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Kiri. Um, administrators have very fixed terms. Yeah? Six months, the previous two administrators. 24 months, this administrator. And so, we continue to have our work cut out, yeah? And we have to do the very best that we can. Remember, it's not the administrator on his own. It is us as a collective. And I will continue to make that appeal to each one of us. Each one of us to ask ourselves the question, what can I do for VUT? Yeah? I think, you know, this way of putting it is well known. I just have a feeling far too many of us, for far too many of us, the attitude has been, what can VUT, VUT do for me? So think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Yes, VOT must do something for you. But what are you doing for VOT and in turn for the nation? And the change must become more and more evident. Each one of you must be the change. I've said this before. Change is the way I speak. Change is the words that I use, the intonation, the, the choices that I make. Am I constructive? Am I positive but realistic? The alternative is I could be quite destructive. I could be quite negative. I could be quite pessimistic. And that then effuses throughout the organization. So what do we want? To have flow and create waves in the university. It's the positive. It's the constructive. It is getting down to work. It is giving the very best that I can. It is learning and growing my capabilities, growing them. Yeah? It is you and me saying the next two years, okay, for me, less than that, 
that the next two years, if I work, if I'm hard at it, 24-7, 365, in two years is a different place. That's how we change places. That's how we change culture. That's how we change performance. That's how we change accountability. And the results will come. The results will come. We've got a burning platform right here in front of us to put our institution on the right path. Who's the institution? Is it buildings? Grounds? Stadium? Laboratories? Those are the means for us to accomplish our goals. But as you have said now, the institution is each one of us. Each one of us. Masi Pakaman. As a belief. Ngeatel. As a belief. Stop observing. Stop observing. Stop looking the other way. It begins with me, it begins with you. Let's be the change. And that's how we're going to change VUT. That's how we're going to change VUT. Hashtag change VUT. <laughs> yeah? Hashtag Who's the change? Yeah? Exactly. Each one of us is the change. And so the way we walk, yeah? The way we walk, the way we speak, the words we choose, the intonation we choose, the eye contact that we make, yeah? Don't look at your shoes. We're in a crisis. Let's not look at our shoes and walk past each other. Let's make eye contact. Yeah? Let's speak with our peers. Let's speak to each other. Let's be in conversation. It's in our hands. It's in no one else's hands. I've said it previously. The conversations in Shabin's to cabinet and parliament. Yeah? I've said this before. The conversations were just stirred again this past weekend in City Press's reports. In the op-ed, in the editorial opinion, in the report itself. Shabins are a buzz right up to parliament and cabinet again. Woo! 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 How much is the state putting into VUT? Annually? One point? One billion? One point two billion? How much? 1.2 billion? 800. 800. Okay. So out of our operating budget of about 1.3, 1.6, out of operating budget of 1.6, the state puts the public, let me remove the word state, our taxes, public taxes, contribute more than 50% of our operating budget. And then on top of that, the state is paying through NISFAS. Public funds flow through NISFAS, an additional, can it? NISFAS? 600. Okay, six, seven hundred. Yeah? So put that combination together. Yeah? And add maybe another 50 million in fees not paid non-NISFA students. So public funds, hard-earned public funds being invested in each one of us. Yeah? So let's rise up. Let's rise up. In six months I want to see the change. Yeah? So we're going to be the change. It's going to be evident in six months.
in the way we speak, the way we engage each other, the way we walk. Yeah? I'm not saying walk like, you know, <laughs> Madiba walk, you know. Hello, hello. <laughs> How are you? Yeah? I'm not saying you have to have the royal walk. But please don't walk. Yeah. <laughs> you can see the body language. <laughs> yeah? Okay, so we have one more hand here, and then we're going to close. Yeah? Thank you, thank you, Prof, for the opportunity, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> ladies and gents. <laughs> Prof, uh, I want, uh, just want to, to ask one question. Just, I'm scared <laughs> because of the crowd. <laughs> uh, as you have said that uh, anyone can approach your office and you, you will communicate with them, but what is it that you have put in place or what measures uh, have the university or the management put in place in terms of ensuring that staff members or maybe students won't be victimized and the other thing again they won't be threatened which maybe can be a norm which might seem normal what do we ensure or maybe the actions that are put in place to uh, maybe promise or ensure them their safety come first because that's the major thing. Yes, I'm sorry, I was so scared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're scared of being scared. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, obviously, in the medium term, meaning in the next 6 to 12 months, we have to, in fact, sooner, certainly the, the, the fraud hotline or the you know, hotline in which you can express your views, that should be up and running soon. I can't give you a date as I speak here now, but it's something that I'm committing to. And so that would be the confidential means of, of communicating. Yeah? Uh, alongside that, a key recommendation also um, from the assessor's report is that we put in place an ombudsman um, who would independently consider um, um, uh, concerns. Now, obviously, we will clarify once we have the ombudsperson in place. The ombud will only consider matters that have not been considered by management. Typically, that is how those offices operate. So, we're keen to bring those two in place in the next six months, um, and that will be the means. In the interim, um, I'll ask uh, uh, um, Mike if he can explain the current process because there's a concern that the current process is not, what is the word? What is that nice English word? What's that word? It's not protected, but what is that other, it's not anonymous. Is there another word for anonymous? You know what I'm saying, right? Yeah, so the concern is, I, I saw a note, Pagam, I saw a note um, from, I think, uh, yes, uh, from a member of staff who had raised a similar concern that, uh, I guess, cheekily, the colleague is saying, uh, that box with suggestions and ideas and concerns is opened by a junior. And uh, there's concern that you know, there might be interference in that process. We also, of course, have the email that we had set up. And for some reason, that email has gone kind of quiet um, as another anonymous means of, of communicating with us. But nonetheless, I don't know if you want to comment on that? Yeah. Thank you very much, Prof. Uh, in fact, um, we are we're encouraged to receive such a comment. What we do, we, as you recall, that in uh, corporate affairs, we've got quite a number of uh, interns that assist us. Probably, I would say it was an oversight on our side that we need to actually make sure that it's only the permanent 
senior staff members who are actually collecting those suggestion boxes. But yes, we really appreciate that comment. Then we are going to make sure that we tighten the, what you call the, the process so that we make sure that all your comments that we receive are actually uh, referred to Mencom. Recently, as Prof has just mentioned, we have received quite a few that were taken to Prof, to deliver to Prof in, in the form of suggestion box to say, please respond as Mencom. So we are looking forward to receiving more of this. Uh, uh, I see Prof has actually mentioned that don't come to him, but write to him. So this is the, the, the what called the platform that we are going to use, the email that is immediately we receive this email, we just forward it to Prof to discuss with the Mencom or to, to tackle himself. So please come forward with those uh, suggestions as well as uh, whatever you want to, to say to Prof, you'll be, it will be taken care of. Thank you, Prof. Okay, cool. I think we can wrap up. Colleagues, uh, thank you very much um, for, for you to actually come front and actually confront the situation. We are all in this together. I'm happy also, Prof, allow me to, to thank my colleagues here. With the hashtag change VUT, we are receiving enormous support from the colleagues that have actually been visited. The campaign is going on is continuing, please Tish and the team will be sending emails to you, attend those, and also we want, what, what was encouraging when I, I received the report from Tish, is that our, co our, our community is also making suggestions as to what kind of a brand that you would like to, to have. This is a, chan a chance for us to change, as Prof has actually uh, mentioned, and let us be the change that we want. And it's only upon us to change. I thank you very much. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of the program. Thank you. <laughs>